It's the cost of care for the uninsured adds about $1,100 to every insured family. That totals about $103 billion, a lot more than previous estimates about costs of the uninsured passed on to those of us who have insurance. Now, the president's figures come from a study by the Center for American Progress. And joining us now is the center's Neera Tandy. Also with us is Jim Frog of the Center for Health Transformation. So, Neera, I have never seen a figure that large, $103 billion paid for by those of us who were insured for the uninsured. How did you get that figure? Well, that actually comes from a Kaiser study with Families USA, which we've discussed in the past. But really, the study is which which Kaiser study? Much... Because I have in my hand the uh, the covering the uninsured in 2008. Is that the one you're talking about? Exactly. Okay. Well, let Families me read USA to you what it for... says. Let let me read to you in the audience mm -hmm. what it says. It says people mm -hmm. who are uninsured will spend about 30 billion dollars of out-of-pocket health care and receive about 56 billion in uncompensated care while they are uninsured. In other words, Kaiser is saying that the total cost is 56 billion dollars, 43 billion dollars of which is paid for by federal and state dollars. And then they go on to say private sources of charity care cover the rest with little evidence mm -hmm. of cost shifting to the privately insured. It's saying very much opposite of what you're saying. Well, there have been numerous studies. Kaiser has another study that says roughly $900 of costs are shifted to the private sector to individual families. So, you know, there's, there's a bunch of data that shows Mira, that this if you're happens using Kaiser, you're, care, you're making an incorrect extrapolation. You are simply making, I mean, the Kaiser study is here for everybody to see. Kaiser covering the uninsured in 2008. Jim, let me go to you. I, again, when the president comes out with figures like this that are extrapolated incorrectly from the original figures, I say, you know, who's the one who's really not telling the truth here? Well, the president is doubling down on a losing hand. Uh, it's clear in every poll that over 50 percent of people don't want this legislation and maybe if he's lucky in the high 30s people do want it. Uh, and we've been down this road before with promising if you just get everyone in the pool, then we won't have a problem we'll be able to cover everyone a lot more cheaply. We tried that in Massachusetts. And they're $47 million over budget this year. We tried yeah. that in Tennessee with their Medicaid expansions in the mid-90s. And the costs were way, way over budget. So throwing everyone in the same pool doesn't work. And there's a huge Tenth Amendment problem with it as well. Virginia just passed a bill through their legislature a couple days ago that said uh, you are not going to be compelled to buy health insurance. And that sets up a major Tenth Amendment fight. Well, that's a, that's a good question. Let me, let me ask Nira to respond to that. Pool. Hold on, Jim. Let me ask Nira to respond. Nira, what about questions about civil liberties and the fact that you can't or shouldn't be allowed to force an individual who doesn't want to buy insurance to pay for it? Mm -hmm. Well, in state after state, we require people to buy auto insurance because we live in a system where we don't want someone who has a car accident to affect the other individuals. We all pay for people who don't have health insurance. The costs of our health care system are driving upwards because some individuals don't have health insurance. And that's why a lot of people, including Senator Grassley and other Republicans, Senator Bennett and other Republicans, have supported an individual mandate in the past because they know that a system that doesn't require people to have health insurance drives up the cost for each yeah. one of us. And when All I'm right, well, acting responsibly, I don't want to have to pay higher costs for Jim, other people who are acting irresponsibly. what do you make? I've heard that car analogy before. What do you make of it? Well, those are states requiring their own citizens to buy auto insurance, for example, or Massachusetts requiring their citizens to buy health insurance. That is not the same thing as the federal government requiring people to do things, which sets off the 10 amendment fight, which means you can't have the pool, right. which you can't even hypothetically have the savings. So it's a totally incorrect uh, comparison. All right. And I, well, I, there's no there's no one who's argued that the Tenth Amendment claim would be absolutely a slam dunk. There are numerous constitutional scholars who've said that nothing is a slam dunk. Nothing is a slam dunk. So, and, and chances are I, that it will be tried in court. Don't wrong. you think, Jim, that there will be some test case? Oh, absolutely. And it will string out for years because eventually it'll have to get to the Supreme Court. And, it, you know, it just completely undercuts the argument that if you throw everyone in the same pool, right. it'll be cheaper for everyone. We got to end it at that. Nira Tandon, Jim Frog, thank you both. And we want to know you. what you guys think. Democrats will fail to pass health care. That is a statement. Is that statement a buy? Is it a sell or is it a hold? Text your answer to 369-249. Your answer is coming up. And on deck.
More evidence to contradict climate change doomsayers gets Al Gore all hot and bothered.